it's a really interesting discussion. Um, it goes back to Madison and Jefferson, and, and um, Jefferson suggesting very famously that the Constitution, and in fact all the laws, should be rewritten every 20 years. Um, it's kind of a radical notion, and he, he said it when he was, he was in France, and he was uh, uh, just sort of walking down in the country somewhere, I think in Fontainebleau, and he came across uh, some woman who was, who was, in his mind, wretchedly poor, and, and it was, she was right up against this very large manor uh, home, and he thought, oh, how terrible, you know, sort of, uh, all sort of uh, uh, ancestral rights and, and, and noble titles and laws should just be ripped up and rewritten every 20 years. And he wrote that suggestion to Madison right after Madison had helped write the U.S. Constitution. Of course, Madison didn't like the idea, but there's some virtues, I think, in what Jefferson was saying. I mean, his famous quote is that the dead should not rule the living, and there's a basic issue of representation that uh, you know generations from now shouldn't be affected but from what generations prior to them had set forth and so that makes sense but it also makes sense that you know you have uh, in a Jeffersonian view you have this revision every 20 or 30 years of going back to basics and rethinking in a very comprehensive way all these things I think that reinvigorates people I think one of the lessons of 2000 the election of 2000 and the constitutional crisis that evolved from that is that people started thinking about the Electoral College and other aspects of the U.S. Constitution the way they hadn't. Um, it was a moment, if you want, of high politics where people were not just thinking about partisan differences and that sort of thing, but really thinking about fundamentals of our system. And in some ways, that was a really nice thing. Um, and I think a, you know, a, a third virtue of, of the Jeffersonian view is that um, uh, you know, we can weed out some of these suboptimal aspects of our Constitution. It can be a much more modern document. And to the extent that political scientists have developed ways to structure politics, Im improvements on the way people can run their lives, uh, you know, it makes sense we, we adopt those things. Um, and, you know, and there's, there's some good reasons why it's, it's nice to have a long-lasting Constitution. Um, certainly, it, you know, it, it provides for some stability and economic development and investment and that sort of thing. And, and I think uh, provides for sort of a, uh, a way to enforce the Constitution. I mean, it's, it, it is just parchment. It's a document. And, and uh, if a president wants to do what he or she really wants, you know, a, a group of nine justices really isn't going to have the, the might to stand in his or her way. Um, it's up to... Uh, uh, citizens and elites and others to coordinate to really understand what's in the Constitution and to know when somebody's transgressing its limits. And you can only have that sort of thing when a Constitution's been around long enough that people know what's in the document and respect what's in the document and you get that sort of that self-enforcing aspect. And So that's one of the nice things I think of, of, of our long tradition.